Hello guys, today we're going to take a look at this JCB 217S uh, I got this model fairly cheap second hand and it's a little bit worn but uh, it should be ok Today we're going to try and remove this rear axle and see about fitting a drive motor in here So the first thing we need to do obviously take this part off the model so that we can actually see what we're working with the whole model just kind of falls apart there, that's pretty useful. So you can see that the windows here have uh, gone uh, clouded from probably, maybe it was left out in the sun for a while or something, or maybe it was just left outside and it's gone a little bit cloudy. But um, I think what I'll do is just black out these windows, get some uh, you know, like uh, spotlight filter material and just black out all the windows. And then I'll have all of this space up here to uh, maybe install some servos that I might be able to get something moving on the back here even if I just got the, the jacks to go up and down that would be pretty cool um, so I don't think we're really losing too much by blacking out the windows anyway I'd like to get the arm on the front moving with uh, with some servos that would be uh, a nice feature uh, to get the rear actor working would be probably next to impossible pretty sure we should be able to find some servos for the front here but uh, even if we can't it, it would be a nice model just to be driving and steering there looks to be a date stamp here so there's a 94 and this looks to be in between 11 and 12 so would that mean that the model was made in uh, maybe November or December of 1994 it's a possibility I suppose because um, I had one of these when I was a child and uh, that would have been back in about 95 or 96 I'd say so quite possible that this model is that old I'm gonna try and mount the drive motor flat like this going forward because I think we'll have more space then if I do that for uh, controls for the rear of the model so if I put that there maybe I'll be able to get some mechanism squeezed in here that can lower the jacks it's going to mean I need to cut away quite a bit of the body here but uh, that can't really be avoided so we'll just have to do that I'm going to try and cut this axle out as cleanly as I can because I want the steering axle for the Libra model obviously with our new drive motor we won't be able to have steering so I think I'll be able to reuse that in the other model so I'll try and cut it out cleanly if I can I've cut the axle off the JCV now so that's pretty good uh, you can see at the back here the little pins that hold our uh, rear actor on are still in the right place so we can just screw that there and that holds our, the rear of our um, model together still and the same should work fine at the front should be able to just screw that back together and that will hold the front together might be slightly uh, shape might have slightly changed but we should still be able to hold the, the model together I'm going to have to drill this pin out here and this pin out here so that I can get access to the axle here so that I can uh, take off the wheels um, I'll probably have to replace that then with maybe a 3mm bolt or something like that I drilled the head off the two pins and took them out for some reason inside this steering uh, mechanism there was a spring or there was two springs located in the holes that the pins come out of if we look at these wheels they hold our position pretty well, they're a little bit stiff to turn and I'd assume that's because uh, there's springs in this axle too and um, it's probably just to keep the position of the steering where you want it on the model so that's quite a nice feature um, as always these um, older models tend to be built a little bit better so that's a nice little, little feature that um, that's on this model you can see now that there's a, a pin in here so it looks like maybe the axle of this wheel is molded to it and they just kind of pressed it into this uh, to this part of the steering here so I'm going to try and drill off the end of this of the little axle 
and see can we get that out without doing too much damage. Well, getting the wheels off this axle was actually a lot simpler than I thought. So I drilled out one of them, which is not the way to do it. So all that's actually holding the wheel in is this little pin here. So that pin goes through here and then is press fit into the wheel. So how you get it off is get a, a good pair of pliers that you can get a good pull on. So I was able to get these in here in here and I grabbed the larger side of this piece of the steering here. So that was like that. And you have to pull very hard to pull the pin out. But once you do that, that's all it takes to get the wheel off. Everything is very simple once you've figured out how it works. So that's half the problem solved. The next thing we need to do is figure out how we're going to mount the wheels to the motor. So I think the, to mount the wheels what I'm going to have to do is drill out these pieces here to 3mm. Uh, try not to drill through this side because we want to try and keep this uh, this face here if we can. So try and drill that out to 3mm. Cut the axles here at the correct length when we see on the model and then glue the wheels on uh, onto the axles. I think that's going to be the best way that we're going to be able to do this. Because of that we better mount the motor first so that we have the correct dimensions before we start gluing the wheels on. So this is our original axle here and if we hold the wheel up to it you can see that the rim of the wheel comes to just about uh, this face here, it goes past it a small little piece. So if we're, we line that up with our motor we can see that our wheels will actually be coming up to roughly where the nuts are on the on the motors here. So that's uh, that makes things a little bit simpler. So in the centre of the wheel here we have this little piece that the pin used to go into. Now, the face here on uh, the centre of the wheel that will slide in to this piece of the steering here and it's going to press up against the face which is actually this flat face here. So we need our wheels uh, the distance between this face on both wheel to be the same as the distance between these two faces on the old axle. So if we hold the old axle up to the to the new motor we can see that these two faces they're not actually too far past the the little nuts here so that's not too bad. We'll be able to cut the wheel maybe at this point and glue the wheels on there. So it's around about 48 millimeters separation between this face on each wheel. That's what we need to get from our new our new setup here. This model has been sitting on the shelf uh, in pieces for quite some time now, but uh, I've finally gotten around to doing a little bit more on it. Uh, what I did was after I got the wheels disconnected from that steering that was in the rear of it there, I made these little. Uh, kind of wheel inserts so in here there was a, a little pin that mounted in there but uh, when I removed that from the other steering I drilled this hole out to 3mm so it would fit this shaft here then I uh, 3D printed this little insert here and it didn't turn out great this time these 3D printed pieces but that just fits in there and it's pretty it's like a press fit so it's pretty pretty tight and then the motor will just come in here the motor axle here I had to cut off the end because obviously enough the the width of between the wheels of a Fent 930 are obviously a lot larger than one of these little JCBs so I had to cut off the end piece here so you can see that little point here that would normally catch the, the Fent 930 wheel and lock it in place so I just took that off and I cut it off both sides and put little inserts in both wheels and I've ended up with quite a nice little solution I think. I have quite a bit of work to do to get this on but it's going to be roughly something around about there in the model and you can see here where these two pieces were cut apart I'm going to need to 
I'm gonna 3D print a piece because this just falls in here. There's nothing to support that now that this piece has been cut away. So I need to kind of 3D print something to uh, make this rigid again, as well as to include this piece. Now, I haven't decided whether I'm going to put the motor up this way. I think I will because I think it will require less modifications than uh, cutting the body up this way to mount the motor like that. To mount the motor like that. I think that would be more difficult. So I think I'll cut out the rectangle for the motor and sit it in, sit it in there somewhere. Whatever way I, I do the motor, I'm going to have to make a plastic cover for the motor. I'll 3D print that again and I'll have to put mounting holes on this piece and this piece and make sure all the dimensions are correct so that when I put the model back together I have the plastic piece screwed in so this will be one solid piece again with the motor built into it then I can put it back in put the two screws the one screw here and one screw here and that should be that whole end of the model rigidly fixed in place now I'm not going to do that today because it's going to take me a little while to figure out how exactly to do that. So you can expect that in an upcoming video. So make sure and subscribe if you want to uh, if you want to see that. If you have any comments or suggestions for this build, uh, let me know in the comments below the video or in the forum. And if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button. That always helps. Or to share the video. This is probably going to be an easy enough build. It's just that the designing the 3D printed pieces for this well sorry to, to get the, the JCB rolling not not everything else moving that that would be very complicated but to get it driving so that we can drive it around a diorama or something that would be that would be relatively easy I think it'll just be a matter of 3D printing these pieces designing the pieces that will fit into the existing frame because unfortunately the motor is just a little bit wider than the gap between the the two sides of the body here if that had to be maybe one or two millimeters wider that would have just slotted up there and it would have been a very easy solution to mount the motor but unfortunately that's not the case so we're gonna have to come up with another solution but that'll be for another video so I think that's everything for this one so thanks very much for watching